Welcome to Global Defense News and Analysis, your number one trusted source for independent journalism, where we bring you the latest insights on global military developments, defense strategies, and technological advancements. Inside the Russia's Alabuga Yelabuga drone factory, the largest drone factory on Earth, Russia's growing dominance in drone warfare has taken a dramatic turn in 2025, with the rise of the Alabuga drone factory, now regarded as the world's largest drone manufacturing complex. Situated in the Alabuga Special Economic Zone in Tatarstan, the facility has rapidly transformed Russia's strike capabilities by mass-producing the GERAN-2, a locally built version of Iran's infamous SHAHED-136 one-way attack drone. With production now exceeding thousands of units per month, Russia's drone output has overtaken the combined capacity of NATO and Europe, reshaping the balance of power in aerial warfare. Originally, Moscow's agreement with Iran aimed to produce 6,000 Shahed-type drones by MID-2025, with a planned output of around 310 units per month. However, satellite imagery, Ukrainian intelligence and on-the-ground reporting suggest that Russia has dramatically scaled beyond that target. By the end of 2024, the Yelabuga plant was reportedly producing up to 440 drones monthly. But by May 2025, production surged to an estimated 5,000 long-range UAVs per month, including about 2,700 Shahed-class strike drones and another 2,300 decoy drones designed to overwhelm Ukrainian air defenses. Russian sources have now confirmed that they've already exceeded their initial targets ninefold. Even more striking, in a single month, June 2025, Russia reportedly launched over 5,400 drones at Ukrainian targets. This industrial push has allowed Russia to launch nightly waves of drones in Ukraine, sometimes exceeding 700 units in a single barrage. Since the full-scale invasion in 2022, Ukrainian officials estimate Russia has launched over 28,000 drones, with nearly half of those occurring in the last 12 months alone. These figures dwarf anything seen from NATO or European drone arsenals. While most NATO and EU member states have advanced drone systems, they tend to prioritize reconnaissance or precision strike capabilities, such as the MQ-9 Reaper or Heron TP, which are expensive, fewer in number, and not built for mass suicide missions. Europe's drone production remains fragmented, with countries like France, Germany, and the UK operating relatively small UAV fleets, primarily for surveillance or targeted missions. By contrast, Russia's Alabuga factory is focused entirely on quantity and expendability. With cheap engines, simplified electronics, and mass production lines, Russia now fields a loitering munition force unrivaled in sheer numbers. Further troubling is Russia's use of child and teen labor in the Alabuga plant. Reports from The Guardian and Reuters show teenagers as young as 14 being trained and deployed to assist in drone assembly, often under the guise of technology education. This blurs the line between civilian manufacturing and military exploitation, violating international labor standards and raising ethical questions about the scale and source of Russia's workforce. Adding to its advantage, Russia has also innovated with decoy drones, cheap replicas that mimic the radar signature of strike UAVs but carry no payload. These are produced in large numbers and are intended to exhaust air defense systems by forcing them to expend interceptors on non-lethal threats. Combined with authentic Duran drones, they form a multi-layered assault designed to bypass Western-supplied systems like NASAMS and IRIST. As NATO struggles to ramp up drone production and coordinate procurement among member states, Russia's centralized, 24-7 drone manufacturing has changed the nature of modern aerial warfare. With a monthly production goal of 6,000 drones by late 2025 now within reach, Russia appears to be preparing for a long-term drone-centric war effort, one that NATO is not yet structurally equipped to counter in kind. Can NATO and its European allies respond fast enough to Russia's industrialized drone warfare model? Should the West shift its procurement strategy toward cheaper, mass-produced loitering drones? And how will Ukraine cope with drone saturation tactics that are becoming deadlier and more frequent? Thank you for tuning in to Global Defense News and Analysis, your go-to source for accurate, in-depth coverage of military developments worldwide. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click the bell icon, and share this with others who value independent journalism. Thank you for listening to Global Defense News.